There's one thing that strikes me as weird about the Ban Bossy campaign, though. Like, Beyonce is fronting it, right? And she's great and everything, but, like, here's a woman dancing around in her knickers, like, pole dancing and stuff, and, and feeding into all those kind of stereotypes of the, of the hip-hop world. Is she the person, is she the, a feminist icon, Darvel, now? She is a feminist icon, and for a number of reasons. She's got a God-given gift as an artist. Um, she is an absolutely unbelievable entrepreneur, entrepreneur and businesswoman. And it's almost a heresy to speak um, against um, her. But I have to say, I went to the Beyoncé concert uh, recently. And, you know, first of all, it's called the Mrs. Carter Show, which is, you know, you're kind of thinking, well, how does that fit in with feminism? Uh, taking your husband's name, some might argue, is a hugely patriarchal thing to do. But I wonder sometimes, well, what does it mean, you know, feminism in the modern age? Because mm -hmm. she is this amazing dancer. And there's one point in the show, uh, look, if I had her body, I'd probably want to dance like that too. But there's this, um, it's very famous, kind of the chair dance and you're watching it, and I was there with a group of friends, and some felt it was absolute expression of high art. Some thought, well, it's not brilliant, that's really empowering, because it's really, really deeply sexual. Some of us had felt that it was a little bit uncomfortable where you're watching something quite on the edge of potentially soft porn in a way. And all the while there are these messages flashing up saying feminism, feminism. And you're just, you know, you're just kind of thinking, well, really, is, is that what it means? You know, and look, it, it's rock and roll. It's hip hop. So sex is a huge part of that. But sometimes they, yeah. even from the world's greatest feminist icons, the messages can be mixed for young but, women. But I think it's, yeah, it's, it's Sinead, it's the way they're portraying. It's at this stage now as if there's a competition I, I between Miley, Rihanna and Beyonce to out porn each other. Well, and I, like, no, look, I think this is something that applies to young male and female artists equally and that often they're pressured you know and I'm not saying for a moment that these aren't intelligent people who are making choices of their own but there's a huge pressure but in like the music like One Direction are in Croke Park tonight they're not being made to strip off their clothes that's and dance around their knickers are they? <laughs> 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 that's the only reason they'll probably be begged for it later. But here's the thing that I think is really important. Were you, Sinead were you so, under pressure down the years to kind I of actually, sex up well, the image a little bit? I actually was. It does concern me. Look, what, here's the thing. Sex and all is a huge part of rock and roll. It wouldn't be rock and roll okay. if not for sex. So that's not the problem. It's that it's, it's, it should be just a quarter of the amount of the time. Because <laughs> what's happened is it's all the time. So all the other things are gone out of rock and roll. There's no other voices. There's no other types of people. Do you know what I mean? It's all, um, design, it's all taking the power out of music, actually. You know? And I think there are young women who feel that their only power is in their sexuality. And it's not your only power. It's a real important power, obviously, or we wouldn't be here half naked, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know, uh, w w women like to, we want to go around half naked, and so, so we should if we want to, that's fine. But that's not all we do at all, you know? And that what's happened accidentally is that um, it's really taken all the other voices out of music and all the power out of music, you know? And what makes me uncomfortable often about it is that very young artists who actually look like children are being sexualized and being encouraged to go in that direction. Justin Bieber, he was only a kid, 16 years of age. He's being sexualized. And what's happening is, you know, um, not to mention names, but young, young female artists who are very sexualized, who look like children themselves, their audience is children. Yeah. And often what's at the back of all any subjugation, if you like, of women, which is not to say that men don't have difficulties to face yeah. as well, you know, but what's at the back of it is actually the subjugation of children. That's what it's really about. That's why when you look at the Catholic Church, for example, there are two equal number one excommunicable sins a Catholic can commit are in this order, uh, female ordination and paedophilia, right? Now, that's a very clever sentence. The beginning of it is makes the women all outraged, but actually it's really about the children. Look at them. This okay, is the, we're, that's we're, the way it is, yeah, in, the that's I, I the way it is in the world. I want to keep it to women that, tonight. Uh, you know. While we're talking about that, that whole image well, thing... Well, that, that yeah. really is about women. Do you know what I mean? I'm giving you... you know. Okay. Leah, that, that whole image issue and everything, you see, I wonder about you as well, because you're a very strong woman and all that kind of thing. And then you've gone into business now since The Apprentice, and it's non-surgical cosmetic stuff you do, yes? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of wonder, is that not just making women into kind of Barbie dolls for a patriarchal notion of what a woman should look like and preying on their insecurities mm -hmm. about ageing and all that kind of stuff and making them identicate? I think um, I thought this would come up. Um, it, yeah, I mean, listen, there, there's no doubt there's a societal pressure on women to conform to, to an idea of a beauty ideal, and, and that societal pressure, it's not something I advocate, but the fact is that it is there. And from my point of view and from Dr. Leah Clinic's ethos is really to, to make sure that those women, should they, you know, make that decision that they want to embark on cosmetic treatments, are able to go to a reputable medical professional, come into a clinical environment and have a thorough consultation 
creation about that process because there's a lot more um, to you know having Botox or having dermal filler than you know than just literally coming in and having the injection. So, I mean, I can tell you from my own personal experience, I must turn away 50%. Of, of women who I see, and it's not just women, you know, there's, there's men as well who are consulting, you know, to, to change their appearance. Are you, are you not uncomfortable at all about the fact that women are coming in essentially disfiguring themselves to, to kind of please men? Mm. They're, well, I don't see it as potentially disfiguring themselves, and that's why I would rather they came to me rather than go to a back-end clinic and, or salon somewhere and have, you know, someone completely illy qualified potentially disfigure them. Um, as you say, and, and I think the, the important thing really is, is making sure they can have the consultation process so you can evaluate, you know, are you, you know, making an informed choice here? Is this treatment right for you? And that you're also able to manage the expectation, you know, and, and there's no doubt that, you know, improving, you know, for some women, improving their appearance um, by having, you know, reducing lines and wrinkles. Um, does help their self-esteem but it, it shouldn't be used as a treatment for low self-esteem if there are underlying issues there and, and for me it's, okay. it's really important that consultation process. Can we talk about some of the things that came up um, this week? So, Dervil, I saw you tweeted Joe Brawley. So Joe Brawley, just for anyone who doesn't know, he, he said that um, about Rachel Wise who was doing the, going to be fronting the Sky GA coverage, he referred to her as, as a Baywatch babe. Yeah, he said out, uh, I think he stated in the screen, a uh, fairly ill-considered treat, Sky uh, equals TV3 plus Baywatch Babe. Joe Brawley has been a huge so which critic. Which bit was more offensive, the oh. TV3 or the Baywatch Babe? It was the Baywatch <laughs> Babe. And, and I, um, like many people, and actually the most of the people that called him out from gender seem to be men, but I was one of the people who called him out on it. And I was saying, are you questioning her sporting credentials? She has represented her country um, as an equestrian. In um, show jumping, in, yeah. In, in show jumping. She's um, not from a GA background now, in fairness. No, but look, look, I mean, I've been a health correspondent, I studied law. I cover politics, I've covered the North. You know, just, you know, just because you're, you haven't come from that particular area doesn't mean okay. you can't develop an expertise. I suppose and I, he did make the point, though, that... No, but that he, he didn't. He, but look, but this, he, did, he did afterwards say that... Subsequently, uh, yeah. but he left it for several hours oh, overnight where he left okay, that tweet uncorrected. Okay, but I'm not defending him, but I want, to, I want to move on to the other point he but did he make, did, which was that, is he really the bad guy here? Or is Sky's idea of throwing well, up these identical kind of good-looking women of a certain age to present Twitter. everything? What it is shows that, is the is perils Sky of Twitter. Because when I called him out on it, he said, look, you've missed the point. What I'm saying is that it is Sky's format of putting out the babes for a uh, predominantly male audience. To which I replied, very helpful. It would be really helpful if you clarified your remarks and apologised. And I did take absolutely huge... Do you think he's right about Sky? Um, I think he, I think he could be, but it's a huge insult to those women who are very competent broadcasters in sport. Like, I mean, Rachel Weisz is an extremely competent columnist, writer, broadcaster, and why shouldn't? Like, I mean, th this notion that they're putting out babes for you know predominantly um, male audience. You know, so do, is, are women excluded from reporting on sport just because it's watched mostly by men? I do accept his point at some level. Yeah. Well, well, I suppose I think I, anyone's saying you exclude women. I think he was just saying that they seem to pick a certain type of woman to, to, to do it and that like, they seem to discriminate against women who don't look a certain way. And from way. time to time they, they pick extremely competent women like Rachel Weisz. I'm, you know, I'm and, not questioning her competence. In fairness to him and under huge pressure, he did apologise. For me, but that actually, that incident illustrated more was the perils of Twitter and social media. He threw something up there, didn't clarify it, had to come back, and I think he was absolutely correct to apologise to Rachel. And you know what? It deters women. Look, I mean, I'm principally a print journalist, but I'm a broadcaster as well, and the, what I've been subjected to online over my hair, I'm one of life's biggest girls, yeah. over my weight, and if I listened or watched a half of those, these keyboard warriors sitting at home in yeah. their underpants with their six-packs, not these ones, those six-packs... To those, if I listen to those things, I would probably never do it again. And you have to try and See, ignore I that. There, I think there's an argument that that happens to anyone who, who well, they're appears equal opportunities, in television. But yeah, they're they cowards are, they are. sitting yeah. at home. But so I, I don't have think to that's say, a, is it necessarily sexism or is that just like a, well, an issue this, about Well, I'll tell you this, Brendan. I'll tell you this. They are equal opportunities, but there is no doubt about it that women get subjected to far, far okay. much more scrutiny based on their appearance than men do. Sinead, were you following the story of Tara uh, Iraq? I the opera singer. read it when Denise sent yeah. it to me. Yeah. What do you think? So uh, this was a, it's an Irish opera singer. She's really good. Um, she w was she was singing at Glyndebourne, and and she, the critics from like four or five of the kind of 
highbrow broadsheet papers, mm. all men, all referred to the fact that she didn't look right for the part because of her weight. It called her chubby and stuff like that. Is well, that fair? Know. or did, is did, did the composer write into the piece how the woman should look? I don't know that. Um, As I understand it, it is, it is, uh, it's supposed to be someone's younger lover mm -hmm. who is posing as a boy, and I do think that sometimes is played by a more boyish-looking woman. Right. Well, you see, I, can't, I suppose I can only judge to some extent because I don't know the show and whether it requires somebody who looks a particular way or not, so to some extent you have yeah. to take the, the grain of salt. Like, but, um, uh, to be honest, without seeing the entire picture, I'd be inclined to think that must be what's happened because I don't think guys would be that stupid writing for The Telegraph and writing for people. Like, <laughs> they couldn't be that stupid. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes it's better to check the whole story before you go with the media's version of it because that's a rushed out the next day story. Fair <laughs> enough. You know I mean? Listen, um, it was men on this occasion, but like, I wonder, in, in, it's in terms of you, Leah, and, and all the... the flack you got in the media was that coming from men or was that largely not written by women for a female audience a lot of oh, that kind absolutely of stuff. absolutely and i think this is a lot of a problem um in terms of i do i'm you know really pro woman in business as well um, and I think a lot of the problem is that women don't help other women. So you've, you've spoke there about the media and absolutely a lot of the most negative and critical articles about myself and about other females that I've read have been written by women, you know, for a predominantly female audience. And, and some of the comments under the, under the articles, which are nearly the most more offensive than the articles themselves a lot of the time, you know, you can tell it's, you know, Sally in, in you know, wheels, you know, so it's, you can tell that they're females as well. And, and the problem is, I, I don't know why, why it is, but a lot of women, you know, are reluctant to, to actually help other women. And in fact, they, they tend to be, you know, your biggest critics. And, and it's a real shame. I think if I, Sinead, can I, can I, can I add to that quickly, my experience of newspapers is that they can be very bullying places mm. and often the women journalists are kind of bullied in, in lots of ways, whether, whether it's subtly or not, and into writing the pieces about women. So I've it had, all comes back I've to the I've had women ultimately. sitting outside my house in cars crying in the winter, being there for 12 hours being told by editors they're not allowed to go home until they get something from me or a picture from me, which they're not going to get, they get a cup of flicking tea and that's it. Crying there yeah. because they're, they're not going to get paid if they don't get a piece in, they're not getting a salary. They get paid if they get a piece in, you know what I mean? And okay, that, so and there's a whole system pressurizing women to... The, the whole to, thing is if you get the women to write the pieces about the women, it supposedly gives more power to the pieces, which is nonsense. The women writing them are bullied. That's what happens. But they're okay, still writing for a female audience, and the female yeah. audience must want to write that. They so do, seem to, they do seem to lap it up, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. Listen, we, we could keep on talking about this. Maybe we'll come back to it again. I'm sorry we're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Sinead O'Connor, Dr. Leah Cotton, and Dervin MacDonald.